So connectivity, right? we're talking about 5G connectivity. But what if we could actually connect with people in the real world much, much faster? Hovering inside a tube and moving really, really fast from one point to the other. Inside this tube, we create a low pressure environment. So basically, we take all the air out. And all the capsule can move much faster with much less energy because it doesn't encounter any resistance. Right? So imagine a tube where basically this train-like capsule, this airplane-like capsule is flying inside at the speed of sound, 1,200 kilometers an hour. Is this even possible? Well, it is. It's all built on existing technology. We have those technologies to build the Hyperloop. The system is completely green, which is an important part. It uses solar, wind, kinetic energy through regenerative braking to, depending on the route, produce even more energy than it's using. And this is a very important part. Why? Not because we want to be green, but because we are producing our own energy and actually ideally a little bit more, and we're using very little, our operational costs are very, very low. And we can be profitable in a very short time span. But how would our lives change if we had a Hyperloop? Well, for one big problem that we have are airports, right? They're overflowing. We're building more and more of them. And a lot of the times, they're fairly close to the city. With a Hyperloop, you can connect these, and now they become one big airport. The airports actually become terminals. They can be further out, maybe 150 kilometers, and you can still be there within minutes. We talk about freight. You can connect Asia to Europe and get freight there within hours rather than within weeks. We literally are able to enable an on-demand economy. But most people get excited about this. You can live in one place and work in another. You can basically live wherever you want. Right? You can connect, you can build new satellite cities outside of the city center connect them with a Hyperloop and still be there within 10 to 12 minutes. As I said, we can build a better system. So for us, it's continuously about envisioning how those look like. One of these examples are our virtual windows. So you see, we don't have windows inside the Hyperloop. So we use screens in this case. And then we use a camera. We do the head tracking. We see where you're looking, and we're moving the image in a parallax way. So that it looks like and feels like you're looking actually out of a real window. So imagine going through Jurassic World, Terminator Land, maybe Game of Thrones. For you, it's an experience. And for the transportation company, it's actually a way of making money. These are exactly the examples that I'm talking about. So for those of you who maybe have heard about the Hyperloop, at the beginning, you know, we heard a lot, is, this is not possible, this cannot be done. Today, luckily, we only hear when is it finally happening. So this is kind of the answer that we're giving to those people that have doubted it at the beginning four years ago. I believe that if someone tells you that something can't be done, it only means that they haven't figured out how to do it. It doesn't mean that you can't figure it out. So we expect to have our first commercial system announced over the next six months. And from there, it's going to take roughly three years of construction until you are going to be able to experience the Hyperloop. And of course, you're all invited. Thank you.